Hello and welcome to Footnotes the Cicerone podcast, a podcast to inspire you about outdoor travel and activities in the UK and across the world. I'm Hannah and I hope you enjoy this episode. Hello and welcome to the latest Cicerone live event. I'm here tonight with Andrew McCloy, who is our England Coast Path Specialist. He's a very, very well experienced long distance walker and a really lovely writer. I'd urge you to read his article on Cicerone Extra about styles. I didn't believe that it was possible to make an article about styles interesting, but um, it's a good one. But we're here tonight talking about the England Coast Path. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Hannah. So we're talking about the England Coast Path, and this is because you have got a book coming out about the England Coast Path. So let's be uh, upfront about that and say that it is available to pre-order now on the Cicerone website and it's called Great Walks on the England Coast Path. It's kind of a bigger format book. We we firmly believe that this walk out of all the walks deserves that bigger format. So do you want to just tell us a little bit about the England Coast Path and why it's so special? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, first thing to um, to point out for people that don't know is that um, the England Coast Path National Trail which uh, will extend around the entire coast of England, so all the way from uh, Gretna Green round to Berwick-on-Tweed, uh, is not yet fully complete. There are still one or two sections to be finished off. It's been a mammoth project, which I'll allude to in a little bit, um, but you can walk lots of it already. There's some great paths that make up the, the trail, and my book is be like a, a taster to the main event. Um, it's cherry-picking, the the best day and weekend walks from around the coast. Some will be familiar, but others probably not. And I think that's going to be the value of the coast path. It's a a 2,800 mile or 4,500 kilometre array of coastal splendour. And there's a little bit of coast for everyone there. And hopefully my book will whet the appetite. That's something that's really unusual, perhaps, about our live event tonight is normally we're talking about places that actually only only really a few people get to go to if we're completely fair I certainly haven't been to most of the places that we discuss on these events but the England coast like probably most of the people listening tonight have visited a part of the coast so this is a real it, it feels like it's a real path for loads and loads of people that we can all find a part of the coast and enjoy it for for us uh, which is a really special thing. Um, and I think the connection between the England Coast Path and the people of, of England and people that enjoy it is something that you like to explore anyway. Um, your One of your other books is on the, the path, the people and journey behind the Pennine Way. And that's a really sort of lyrical look at the Pennine Way and the people that made it happen and what it's like to walk it and it's a bit again a bit of a different book for Cicerone but a really really special one. Absolutely well I mean in some ways we're we're preaching to the converted because everyone that goes walking knows that it's the best way to uh, to understand the countryside uh, and the communities uh, that are there And, and the same on the coast as on the Pennine Way or anywhere else, if you go at walking pace and you're inquisitive and you're alert um, and you walk uh, with an open mind responsibly, there's so much to discover as well as just purely having a, a fabulous time as well. And the, uh, I think the thing about the coast path is that it's, it's sheer length uh, and variety means that there's something for everyone. Uh, and yeah, there'll be something for backpackers and adventurers, but, Believe me, there's plenty of places that you can you can go whatever age or ability, um, whatever mood you're in, what the weather's doing. There's a there's a bit of coast that's just suitable for you. Um, and, you know, the England Coast Path will, will showcase all of that and more. Before I ask too many questions that you're you're going to cover in your little presentation, um, I will get the presentation up and, and we can have a look at some beautiful pictures whilst you're talking about the path. Right. So. I'm going to take you on a journey uh, in the next few minutes around the entire coast of England. I'm not going to take you on every every mile or every kilometre because we'd be here probably till next year. Um, but thematically, I'll, I'm going to point out one or two things. I'm going to explain how the England Coast Path is, is coming together as a concept, as a trail, um, but also 
you know, what a wonderful place to walk. And if if you thought the England coast was uh, developed and um, uh, spoiled, then think again. There are places that will surprise you, even um, even in the south of England, that are just wonderful to walk on the coast. One of the best things I think about walking on the coast is um, it's a, it's a place that's alive, constant movement, and I think this is. Um, this is for all of us, isn't it? We all like to be beside the seaside. We all have um, an attachment to to a part of the coast. Um, formative experiences for many of us, family holidays. Uh, some of us are, are lucky enough to live there. I mean, I'm in landlocked Derbyshire, but um, I, I feel the pull of the coast like anyone else. Uh, else. And although I'm in landlocked Derbyshire, um, probably the furthest away I could be from the England coast I'm about 70 miles away, and that's that's the most you can be anywhere on the English mainland from the coast. So we're an island nation. The coast is is part of our DNA, if you like. And as Patrick Barkham, the uh, fabulous writer, says, we're more edge than middle uh, as a nation. It's it's very much coast is very much um, part of our culture, part of our human history. Uh, we've got the lighthouse at Start Point in South Devon here, but our uh, top right is Staithes, a beautiful uh, fishing village. I'm sure a lot of people will know in North Yorkshire. Um, but it's 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 a place of, um, of industry, uh, of defence, of seafaring. Uh, and bottom right is the, the fishing fleet at Newlyn, which is still large and still very busy. Um, but it's also a place of leisure uh, and Brighton, Blackpool, Whitby, Lancaster. There are there are places, the ports and resorts of great identity all around the England coast. But there's also some fabulous um, natural landforms, and even um, even on the flattest, pencil thin strips of land here at Spurn Head, in the mouth of the Humber, you you can have uh, really dramatic walks. Uh, you might think walking out four miles and then walking back four miles uh, along a little strip of land into the North Sea might be pretty dull. Believe me, it's not. Um, there is so much to see, whether it's it's wildlife, shipping, lighthouses, uh, defence installations, or just timing your return so you don't get cut off by the tide, which which washes over um, the the route in. It, it, it's a it's a breathtaking walk. Of course, the coast is also about height drama and beachy head uh, in sussex the the chalk cliffs on the south coast uh, never mind dover the the sussex cliffs are every bit as impressive and certainly beachy head and the seven sisters which i know very well uh, is is one of the finest walks it's beginning of the south downs way national trail uh, and surely a highlight uh, on the south coast the contrast is on the east coast where you've got as as in here uh, with Chis Dakin's photo of the Norfolk coast at Brancaster, uh, a very quiet, very calm, very serene walking experience and a hugely wildlife rich uh, walking experience um, uh, along the North Norfolk coast. There again, uh, even where there's habitation, it's a, it's a fascinating place to explore. This is the, uh, this is Bosom on the Chichester Harbour uh, around Hampshire and West Sussex, uh, a photo by Compass Photography. The houses look like they're being immersed in the in Chichester Harbour. It's a tidal road along the front of the houses, which floods twice a day. Uh, a lot of unwary tourists leave their cars there, and they have what locals call the Bosom Car Wash as a result. But it's a it's a super walk, and there's a walking route around the harbour that I profile in the book, which is wildlife rich. It's full of historic villages and pubs, uh, and it's, uh, it belies the fact that you're only a few miles down the road from Southampton or Portsmouth. This, you wouldn't think, is about 12 miles from the centre of Liverpool, Formby, uh, off the Sefton coast. Beautiful, wide, long, sandy strip. Again, it's one of the walks in the book that was a real eye-opener to me. I, I enjoyed explore, exploring the northwest coast more than I thought I would, and the the Lancashire and the Cumbria coast is a is a largely undiscovered gem away from the likes of Southport and Blackpool. So onto the coast path uh, itself, the England coast path 
uh, in some ways is threading as question of threading together what's already there because they've been passed around the coast um, for for centuries whether they were excise men looking for smugglers or fishermen uh, going to work trading routes uh, community paths latterly of course uh, leisure and recreation has taken over and national trails like the southwest coast path which was first opened back in 1978 and parts of the cleveland way in north yorkshire uh, the Saxon Shoreway in Kent have been in, in existence for a long time. There's been lovely coastal walks or coastal trails around parts of Lancashire and Cumbria. But now the England Coast Path is threading them all together to create uh, one long continuous route around the entire uh, seaboard of, of England. It also includes all the islands that are connected or you can walk at least in low tide uh, to the mainland. Um, and not that you can walk there, the Isle of Wight has been included on the England Coast Path uh, route as well, which already has a super uh, coastal walking route around the entire island. But of course, you take the rough with the smooth on the England coast, not all of it is unspoiled, not all of it is pristine. Of course, a continuous route still has to na navigate uh, the main picture, Dungeness Nuclear Power Station, bottom right, the um, the ferry port at Dover or top right at Alford in Suffolk. Um, just treading your way carefully past unexploded ordnance and uh, ex-military sites. But this is the this is the nuts and bolts of the England coast. It's a it's a living, breathing coastline, warts and all. And in in between the built up, in between the estuaries, in between the oil refineries and MOD ranges, there are uh, really wonderful places to, to discover. You have Minsmere uh, in Suffolk within sight of a nuclear power station. So there are there are contrasts and um, juxtapositions all the way uh, around the coast. Just a word or two about the evolution of the coast path, England coast path uh, as a national trail. So I take you back to the Countryside and Rights of Way Act 2000, which granted a right of access to mountain, moorland, downland uh, and open high country there was unfinished business there as uh, a lot of um uh, people in the in the rambling world know woodlands were left out but the coast was as well and so in 2009 uh, nine, the marine and coastal access act was passed uh, followed on by a scheme a few years later which defined where the uh, the new access rights to the coast would be on the right is the latest map from Natural England, the government uh, body charged with developing uh, the coast. It has been a long, hard uh, and a bumpy road. So uh, since the act was passed, passed in 2009 and the scheme launched in 2013, the, the first stretch down in Weymouth was open in time for the 2012 Olympics. Um, but after that, it was slow going. Natural England uh, had stretched resources from the beginning. There were legal challenges, then COVID came along, but their coastal access team with support from Ramblers volunteers deserves huge credit for uh, doggedly persevering at the work. It looks likely now that although the 2020 and even the 2022 target would probably just be missed. The coastal path will probably be open next year now in its entirety, but there's plenty already to walk. And the the key difference between the England coast path and say the Wales coast path is that in England, the new coast path sits in an access strip. And this is the this is one of the, the big differences and, and really one of the um, the smart moves in terms of defining English coastal access, because as you see from these images, top left on the Cleveland Way near Whitby, the chalk cliffs on the top right at uh, Lower Worth, bottom right uh, in Lincolnshire on the crumbling east coast of England, uh, and bottom left on the Lizard, where the path has rather quaintly foundered, as the local authority has described it. The, the English coast, indeed the, the coast uh, as a whole, um, is uh, suffering from changing sea levels, weather events, and the, the steady creep of climate change. So the, the legislation that created the England Coast Path created, in effect, an access strip around the coast, 
where you had a right of access and where the national trail will sit so that when the path needs to be realigned after a landslip or inundation, um, then the path can be moved back within that zone relatively easily uh, and walkers will have hopefully continuous access. So it's a there's a flexibility built into the new national trail, which is it's very smart, very inventive, and will hopefully mean that the the um, the route can be sustained for for years to come. Of course, lots of people have been walking the coast already. Uh, I, as you can imagine, there's a keen long distance walker, writer, reader. I've got plenty of uh, of books by some adventurous and some really quite driven uh, walker writers. John Merrill, bottom left, uh, walked around the coast of, uh, of England, Scotland and Wales uh, as long ago as 1981. Shelley Hunt, uh, John Wesley and Spud Tor Ponsonby have all followed suit walking around the entire coast of Great Britain. And this was years before the England National uh, trail um coast Pass national trail was was even really dreamt up we're talking quite a long route of course and these these walkers um had to follow the best they could around the the edge of the edge of the land 2800 miles give or take a few is the estimated length of the england coast path of course if you add on the wales coast path as well then you'll have a continuous coastal walking route around the uh, entire shores of England and Wales, coming to something in the region of 3,665 miles or 5,899 kilometres. Bit geeky if you want to know those stats, but believe me, there will be people watching this thinking, oh, now there's a challenge and a half. Um, not everyone wants to walk hundreds or thousands of miles. Uh, arguably, I don't. But um, what I do enjoy is the fact that the English coast is accessible and deliberately uh, most of the walks in my book are accessible by public transport. Indeed, a number of them are designed to use a bus or a train uh, to, to get there and back. Uh, this is the splendid coast hopper bus that plies the North Norfolk um, coast. It shadows the coast path pretty much the whole of the way uh, and is just the perfect way to sustainably get from A to B and back again, enjoying the comfort of a of a, a bus ride at the end of the day. Likewise, there are great bus services around West Cornwall. Um, there's a fantastic coastal line, uh, railway line around Cumbria that I'm sure many of you will know, the Cumbria Coastal Line, as there is uh, on the Mersey uh, and Sefton Coast as well, Mersey Wales uh, line. There's there's no excuse. The England coast in many places, not everywhere, but in many places is readily accessible. Uh, this will be a, a versatile national trail that, that you really will be able to get to and to enjoy uh, without having to take your car at every uh, opportunity. Of course, the England coast path, some of it is not so accessible, but there'll be plenty of surpri uh, surprises along the way. This is Viv Crow's wonderful photo of uh, Black Coombe from Warney Island. Warney Island was a place I'd never been to before off the coast at Barrow in in, uh, in Cumbria, edge of Cumbria. Uh, it's connected to the mainland by a bridge. It's a wonderful 16 mile round island walk on the England coast path, which is pretty much deserted. The habitation is in the middle of the island. There's nature reserves either end. There are views like this to die for. Uh, and it's it's just one location out of many on the England coast path. You think, really? I've never been there. I didn't realize that was so beautiful. I recommend the, the creeks of Essex, County Durham's cliff path, Chichester Harbour you saw earlier. Uh, even the Wirral around the D estuary is a, is a wonderful uh, little walking strip. There are plenty of places uh, that will surprise you on the England coast that are unblemished uh, and just offer superlative walking. There are plenty of places I'm sure that will be familiar, but you just keep going back to again and again for their natural splendor. This is one of Chisdakin's shots of Lulworth Cove, uh, which is part of the uh, outstanding southwest coast path um, uh, on the, in this case, on the, the southern uh, Dorset edge. If you want to get high and mighty, though, uh, you can't really get much better than North Devon and North Cornwall. This is the stretch uh, between Hartland Quay and Bude, one of the most roller coaster 
uh, coastal journeys I've ever undertaken. Um, not for the faint-hearted. You go up and down, up and down the course of, what, 16, 17, 18 miles. It is exhilarating. Uh, the views are stunning. Um, but you know you've had a walk and you know you really have had the, the, the wind in your hair and the, and the puff taken out of your lungs. And there are surprises as well, even places that um, you, you thought you knew. Bottom left of the Hilborough Islands off um, the Wirral in the mouth of the Dee estuary, which you can walk across at low tide. You've got to be pretty smartish, but it's a short walk from West Kirby. Um, if you time it, it's an amazing place. There's old buildings, there's wonderful views. Um, it just adds another dimension to any coastal walk. Then bottom right, Chisdaken was lucky enough to have a lovely sunset at, um, at Dover, of all places, as you come off the White Cliffs down towards the ferry uh, terminal. And then no coastal walk is, um, is complete without a, some kind of food or drink to celebrate your walk. Uh, bottom left there, or the left image, is the smokehouse at Craster in Northumberland, where the most delicious kippers uh, are produced. Although my walk that starts there may be best finished there because walking the full day with a pack of kippers in your rucksack is not to be recommended. Other walks in the book where I, I, I invite you to dally at Cromer, where um, in season the crabs are wonderful and certainly down in Cornwall uh, as well. But you can't beat fish and chips at the end of the day uh, 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 on a resort or in a, in a port. And uh, for the record, Bridlington and Penzance they're the best fish and chips I've had on my coastal journeys so far, but I'm sure everyone will um, will have a different view of that. the The culture, the coastal culture, uh, is is also quite unique. You, many of you will rec well recognise or will be aware that this tall iron statue staring out impassively from the the beach at Crosby near Liverpool is part of Anthony Gormley's uh, 100 Iron Men, who stand in the waves staring impassively out to the Irish Sea. There are other wonderful art installations around the English coast, in particular in County Durham, where the old uh, coal mining legacy is celebrated and nature being reborn by a number of wonderful art installations between uh, Seaham and uh, Hartlepool. And then there are one or two uh, unusual things you come across. This is Dungeness on the Kent coast and I presume Kent County Council thought on a quiet unfenced road with no traffic coastal walkers might just need a helping hand to cross the road um why not absolutely why not and if you think Dungeness looks uh, a little bit bland uh, believe me uh, the largest cuspate sh shingle foreland in Europe boasting a miniature railway a nature reserve nuclear reactor old fishing huts, it's quite something else. Um, it's the English coast in, in miniature. Um, it's spoiled and not spoiled. It's full of drama, full of intrigue, but full of discovery. And really, I think that's what the England coast path is all about. When it's complete, you'll have 2,800 miles of discovery. Um, my book, hopefully, will just start you on your way and just whet the appetite. And there it is. <laughs> There's the book. I just can't wait to to see a copy of this book and and get it in my hands and look at all the photographs because I think it's going to be it is going to be beautiful. So yeah, that's available to pre-order now on the Cicerone website and other places I guess where you can you can pre-order books. Yeah, wow. I feel like we've just been on a bit of a journey and uh, it's a lovely day for it. We're both in the sort of the north of England and it's sunny up here and I can't imagine much better right now than a, a stroll along the coast. But one thing I really like, I think, about, about the England coast is that there's always something new. Um, you know, I go walking most weekends, I'll find a patch of coast. I've got two dogs and it's always good to take them up and down a bit of coastline. And one of my favourite walks is, is right near Heesham Power Station. And you think, a bit like your picture of Dungeness, you think, okay, sometimes it can look a bit grotty on a grey day, but there's always something beautiful. There's always something new to look at. Um, I have invariably got my head down looking at the stones and the and the bits of seaweed and trying to identify 
whelks and stuff in the in the rock pools but there's always something to look at and um, whether that's just the drama again like you said of the a, a storm when when the waves are crashing against the coast sometimes I go out to Morecambe Bay and just look at at the waves crashing up and Hannah one of the things I, I really didn't touch on is the, the the natural history of the of the coast the I found walking along the Norfolk coast difficult because there are so many outstanding nature reserves and yet you don't even need to go into the to the, the bird reserves because it's there right in front of you if you walk quietly you're observant uh, and you you just look you look around and and uh i suddenly there was a marsh harrier quartering the marshes even in the middle of the day just just close to me um and i walked into the evening which is always a, a better time in the middle of the day usually for birds uh and the the flocks of geese were taking off it was or landing uh it was it was really quite sublime um so a pair of binoculars as well as a sun hat are um, essential items in my rucksack yeah i completely agree um and i quite often see bird watchers with binoculars sitting on the path near the power station and just because these places are built up and you know they do have industrial elements it it really doesn't mean that they can't be havens for wildlife and we i quite often see all all sorts of birds egrets and curlews and cormorants and but the the other thing as well that um i mean i'm i'm originally from london the southeast and uh, i really enjoy a little bit of cheeky promenade sometimes you know brighton uh um, place like that and when you're in the mood and you want to stretch your legs especially with family it, it's great fun but um if you're charting the history and i'm a history graduate and i i find places like lancaster or the the seafront at liverpool fascinating absolutely really fascinating you can read the maritime history exploration um it, through through the buildings through through the way it's laid out and the one of the um the things i i enjoyed about the cleveland way walk the north yorkshire coast which i've done quite a few times now is learning all about captain cook and his life starting off at stays and whitby uh, and and learning how um how he earned his living the distinctiveness of the cobalt fishing boats compared to elsewhere and and you 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 just you learn something every time whether you pick it up deliberately or you just stop at a an information board and go oh that's that's good i better store that one away for <laughs> future knowledge yeah you do and and what's nice i think about the the paths that are already really well established is there's quite a lot of artworks all around the the coast and there'll be sort of monuments to things so you know our, our one of our cicerone friends um sarah williams just walked the wales coast path and she was taking pictures of the the monuments to to people and there's there's loads of that again man lancaster and morecambe there's we had the the cockling disaster a few years ago and there's a monument for that so you end up if you're just curious and and take photographs of things you can always google it later and find out exactly what it was but yeah you can you can learn an awful lot as well as just having a nice walk the other thing that i really liked that you said was that we're more edge than middle what a lovely a lovely quote mm, Pat, yeah patrick barkham uh he, he's written a lovely book of his coastal walking experiences and growing up on the coast and um it, it's very true i think a lot of us have that deep personal attachment whether we live on the coast or we we just holidayed there as 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 children and there's something i don't know what it is about the coast i i've i've tried to identify it uh and i've, I've touched on it in the int introduction to the book i think it's the it's the constant moving uh movement and the the fact that all your senses are engaged on the it, when you're walking on the coast whether you're it's the the, the smell uh of of the seaweed whether it's the constant moving of the of the waves or you know as i you know we love to do we go barefoot walking on the shingle or the sand so there's that that touch as well it's it's a way that it engages all of all of our senses uh and there's something i think deeply uh therapeutic almost sometimes romantic about being by the coast whether you're with others others on your own is something that is soothing um just as much as at other times um the coast is fearsome and dramatic and you're talking about um monuments and memorials uh i was um i was su 
not surprised, but I was taken aback walking around the coast of Cornwall and Devon, how many morals to shipwrecks, how many mariners have died um, off, off the coast, just of those two counties. The shipwrecks that have taken place is just astonishing. And again, I chronicle some of those uh, in my book as well. Uh, and the, the work, even today, of the uh, National Coast Watch, Coast Watch Institution uh, and Trinity House Lighthouses, it's, it's again, so much part of the, the story of, of, co of coastal walking, a story of um, coastal adventure. Yeah, what can I say? We just we just need to get out and explore some more of it um, because everybody, you know, like I'm saying, I, I know Lancaster and Morecambe really, really well um, and the coastal areas near me. And I've, I've gone as far south as Southport sometimes for a coastal walk. You know, I'm, I'm adventurous, me. Um, but there are there, there will be places that people haven't been to in your book and on the, the whole coast. Uh, and that's quite exciting that you can just go and find something new. Um, and explore something new. I really think that if people just dismiss the England coast path as well, you know, I, I know the coast. I've I've walked uh, I don't know southwest coast path, or it's all built up in the southeast, or you know the northwest is really about the lakes. No, it's not. There is there is something to discover everywhere. So, I one of the one of the revelations to me was not just Warney Island off off Cumbria, but the, the the creeks and the marshes of Essex, so you know not that far from from London, quite built up southeast, and yet you go out to Bradwell on Sea or somewhere like that, uh, you could be you could be miles and miles and miles away from anyone, and it's the, um, the kind of place that feels remote. So when the mist comes in, it's about like Dickens describing the North Kent marshes, you it's eerie, it's quite spooky but it is really atmospheric and the walks might not be um, dramatic in terms of height gain, but in terms of atmosphere and, um, and memories, they're you know, better than anywhere else. We had a trail race once in Southport and we were just running through this lovely pine forest and then we, we opened up and we came out onto the beach and it was like golden sand and sand dunes. And I had a really weird experience of thinking, have I just gone through some weird portal? <laughs> I'm on holiday somewhere. And it, yeah, it's yeah. People that think that they they know all of all of the coast path. I think probably there's there's still something new that you can discover. Um, and I suppose there, there might be people who are thinking, why do I need a guidebook at all? You just turn up to the coast and you just walk up and down it and. You know, to an extent, that's true for for a number of guidebooks. You can follow signs and you can get a map and you can just go and walk. And I think one of the key things with your book is the curated element. It's somebody who's walked an awful lot of the, the path and chosen the some really, really special parts because not everybody is going to be able to go off and walk 2,800 miles. Um, but 30 walks highlighting the best bits of all of those 2,800 miles. That's a bit more within the remit of a normal person at weekends and, and evenings, perhaps. Absolutely. And and there are there are mainly day walks, but there are some weekend walks or two to three day walks, if you like, um, which uh, are very varied. So, um, you know, the Norfolk, two-day walk along the Norfolk coast path, flat, very accessible, wildlife rich, uh, hugely enjoyable you can make it as long or as short as you want in terms of stages the coast hopper bus will will pick you up and drop you off it's it's a really rewarding walk for for whether you're um looking to to uh, to do 20 miles in a day or, or just four or five miles in a day um likewise there's some lovely uh walks that are are quite low level uh, i'm thinking of the walk around the Wirral and the d estuary that are, again are very accessible um you can get to quite easily and there there are walks almost for for any weather and certainly for for all comers but at the other end of the scale and, and there is this is the variety of the coast you can um walk parts of cornwall or north yorkshire or even bits of the county durham uh cliffs that are really quite challenging and exacting and you can have that roller coaster experience, which is wonderful, and that dragon slaying experience. And I think the Ingham Coast Path is it's got a bit for everyone. And 
uh, in for a 2,800 mile route, uh, it's useful to have a guide just to just to show you maybe the the bits you don't know so well, uh, and to, to tell you the stories you do go along that journey as well. Because I I learned so much and went back quite often to to learn even more um, about things that I've missed or uh, stories or tales or wildlife or pubs that I'd overlook. So <laughs> yeah. there, are, there are so many reasons to go back. And and the other thing as well that I learned is pack a towel, pack a travel towel, even even in the winter, because it's um, maybe not in the North Sea in the winter, but um, dipping your feet at the end of a, 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 a nice long coastal walk is, is, is wonderful, even if a swim is out of the question. Good top tip. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I would need to tell for any swimming uh, potential, but I, I always end up falling over when I go to the estuary near me. I always end up skidding in the in the mud and having a, a slightly more immersive experience than I planned, um, <laughs> has to be said. We've talked a little bit about how the England Coast Path compares to other coastal paths, and it's it's asking the difference between the England Coast Path and the Wales Coast Path, and then the Brittany Coast Path. I'm 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 not um, I'm not too familiar with the Brittany Coast Path. I, I, I wish I was. Um, I, I know it's there's similarities to in terms of the the scenery uh, and the walking experience to to Cornwall, of course, and and the southwest. Um, but the I think the interesting contrast is between the England Coast Path and the Wales coast path both fantastic routes and, and i think the welsh government deserve enormous credit and natural resources wales for for developing the wales coast, coast path so quickly uh, and it's been such a success in some ways i think it's probably spurred on the development of the england coast path but in terms of how they're devised uh, and their legal status they, they are different so the although both are essentially legal rights of way the wales coast path is a is a, a linear walking route it's a it's a line a path which is sometimes right on the coast but other times as near as possible to the coast the the england coast path though as i said earlier by the way that the scheme and the legislation is framed really artfully done allows for uh, that coastal margin spreading room is sometimes called where the path can be rolled back if the cliffs um, disappear into the sea as they're doing quite frequently on the east coast and that coastal access strip also confers wider right of access to foreshore where it's safe to do so with with a few exceptions of course um, uh, around private property and military and nature reserves and so forth but there's a wider right of access and hopefully a more flexible in English route which um, gives it just a little bit more versatility but I as a continuous walking route, when both routes are complete, or the English one is complete, uh, it would be quite amazing to walk around uh, to home nations, England and Wales, continuously. Uh, there will be someone desperate to, to do it and to say they've done it for uh, the first. But um, the access overall to the, the coast of England and Wales that it, it now allows is going to be fantastic. More and more great walking. Yeah, and we can see the success with the Southwest Coast Path and the Wales Coast Path. You know, so many people walk those as complete routes. They, they do. And the Southwest Coast Path, I've been a, a member of the association there for, for many, many years. It's also been a great economic boon for the Southwest as well. It, it is a selling point of visiting the Southwest. The fact that there is this wonderful, accessible, well signposted, well looked after coastal path for 630 miles around the entire southwest coast and if you can uh, magnify that and think well a few years down the line that's the rest of england you know some of it won't be quite as dramatic some of it might be a bit more problematic but um that's the opportunity and the accessibility that this new um, ambitious national trail is going to present and i you know huge credit as i said earlier to natural england for um, persevering in the face of some adversity uh, to, to looking to complete this. It's not yet done. It, it's going to take a little while to do every section, but they're making great progress, uh, aided by volunteers from the Ramblers who have helped plotted the route. Um, it's coming together piece by piece, uh, and it, it would be wonderful when it's all finished, but a lot of it is there already, and you shouldn't, you shouldn't not go out and, and enjoy it already. 
Yeah, I mean, that's a really important thing to mention is how much work goes into creating a path like this and that there are well-established parts um, of the coast that have got paths. But yeah, it's been it's been a massive, massive challenge. And, you know, I was jokingly saying to you the other day that if they'd have known that we were going to have Brexit and COVID, I can't imagine that they'd say, do you know what would be a lovely side project whilst this is going on? Let's try and do a path around the whole of the England coast <laughs> because it's just, it is massive. It's a massive amount of work. But but, but the price at the end of it is um, is, is enormous. The uh, And, you know, we say this hopefully with some pride as well, England will have the longest um, coastal path in the world in circling an entire country add on Wales of course as well it gets even better uh, and, and and you know that is something that is to shout about it really is especially on a crowded island um, where um, you know the we're not a wilderness and there are competing interests all around the coast of course um, you might think walking the Thames estuary is probably not top of your list and yet walking in and out on the um, Thames path into London is is just fantastic seeing um, seeing the opening up of Docklands and, and London, but the developing the coast path around England through, has thrown up so many issues, not least all the estuaries uh, and in in particular places like Suffolk and Essex. The coast path is taking a long time there because it is so problematic going in and out private land owning, lots of nature reserves and conservation interests, which Natural England quite rightly are, are having to balance carefully. And then, you know, you have to make a, the odd deviation around um, nuclear power station or oil refinery. But where you go after that, and uh, it's you know, plain sailing. And and for anybody who, you know, if all your friends have done the Southwest Coast Path then 630 miles just isn't going to give you the bragging rights that you need, then, uh, you know, you can bite off a chunk of this. And OK, someone, quick question. Um, somebody's asked what walking boots that you use. <laughs> Jer Jeremy wants to know because he says lots of long distance walkers use boots that aren't waterproof, but they're light and comfortable. If you do use non-waterproof boots, isn't it unpleasant having your feet wet all day? See, this is down to the real nitty gritty of what matters. Oh, it is, isn't it? <laughs> it is. So... Uh, okay, so I've got a, a variety of footwear, as you, you might imagine. So when I'm walking that switchback North Cornwall coast, I, I probably put my, my tough Scarpa boots on because I don't want to go over my ankles and I, I, can, I stub my toes quite often. Um, <laughs> however, if I'm walking around Chichester Harbour, I remember I, I wore sport sandals. It was by far the most pleasant thing. Uh, and where the path was semi-flooded, I could just splash through. Um, I've got some decent walking shoes, that trail shoes that I will use elsewhere, where the coast is a, or the, the ground conditions are a bit more straightforward. Um, I, don't, I try not to wear walking boots unless it is rocky or up and down on cliffs. I much prefer going lightweight footwear. And um, believe me, any opportunity to take my shoes and socks off altogether. <laughs> and walk barefoot on the on the sand, like across Woolacoom Sand in North Devon, for about three or four miles uh, along the waves of Woolacoom Sand in the shallows. It's absolutely gorgeous. It doesn't matter what the weather's doing. The feeling of your feet, the feeling in your skin, um, and the fact your your feet react really well to salt water, of course, uh, is the way to go. So, so boots only when I need to, but sports sandals or walking trainers or walking shoes other times i have to agree i think getting wet feet is par for the course I, I it doesn't bother me but having sand in my shoes and having hot feet with sand rubbing in my shoes is just like a, a really really fast ticket to getting blisters and it's really unpleasant so yeah trying to avoid that is good Wow, another really, really tough question. We're going to have to just rattle through these. So if you can try and answer this briefly, I don't quite know how possible it's going to be. Kevin asks, if you could do just one section. <laughs> I think you must have known this was coming in, in some sort of guise. So if you could do just one section, what section would you choose? Oh, I was dreading this question. Just tell him to buy the book. Just say, no, Kevin, I can't tell you that. Just 
<laughs> okay, so uh, 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 if I'm allowed to just just widen it a little bit. So Seven Sisters Beachy Head Walk on the Sussex coast has childhood family memories. We went down there from South London and it's not my playground, but I just enjoy the almost childlike fun of going up and down those roller coaster chalk cliffs. Um, it's it's a very, it's just a very basic, enjoyable, easy, rewarding walk. I will go back to the, uh, the high cliffs of Cornwall and Devon for that really high powered roller coaster, windy, full on experience of um, southwest walking. But then I don't think I could beat walking along the deserted sands of Northumberland between the castles uh, and the fishing villages for, for that other experience. So I'm afraid to say it's whatever mood I'm in or who I'm with. or um, So there's not one, I'm afraid. Yeah, I, I knew that was going to be a, a tricky one. Right, in one minute, is it possible to get luggage transfer between places on the on the route? Uh, as far as I know, only on um, existing uh, coastal trails like the Southwest Coast Path. I think that's really where the, the uh, baggage transfer companies really serve. I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping as the England Coast Path takes shape and areas become maybe more popular, then others others will develop. But at the moment, I think it's limited just to one or two of the big trails, coastal trails. That's great. Thank you. Right. How long would it take to walk the entire path? No, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, apart from the obvious, how ambitious or how fit or how crazy you are, <laughs> Um, if you're John Merrill, it won't take you very long at all. Um, but if you want to stop and savour it, uh, that's a really good question. I would have thought um, three or four months, something like that, possibly. But I, I'd imagine the England Coast Path will be a bit like Land's End John O'Groats, which I've written about as well. Uh, plenty of people will make it a lifetime's ambition and will do it in instalments. And I think that's how ultimately I will do it. I will go back and do another little bit, thread it together section by section, or maybe do the South Coast or the East Coast or East Anglia, that's how I think it will start breaking down because 2,800 miles, it's a big ask for most people in one go. It is a big ask. And um, yeah, with that, I think the best place to start really is at the moment, if you've got an interest in walking any of the England Coast Path, get yourself a copy of this book. Um, it is bigger than a normal Cicerone book. It's not just a guidebook. It's got beautiful pictures. Um, it's a really inspirational book as well. It will really help you choose somewhere special to explore. And hopefully when it launches next year, we'll be able to celebrate the launch of the, the full England coast path and the longest coast path in the world. I think that is something to be proud of. Yeah, it's it's exciting. Thank you so much, Andrew, for for being here tonight and for telling us about the path. It does look fantastic. I think everyone's going to be a little bit inspired. And we, d we do, from time to time, we publish articles by Andrew on the Cicerone website, so you can you can have a look there. I do recommend the Styles article, but we will have a couple more articles about the Coast Path. Um, we send out a newsletter once a fortnight, so you can sign up for the newsletter as well to keep in touch with the things that we're up to. And you can join us next month. We'll have Paddy Dillon back and we'll be talking about Guernsey. So, yeah, very coastal, but not England. So, yeah, thanks so much for joining us and uh, we will see you soon. Thanks, Andrew. I hope you enjoyed the latest episode of Footnotes, the Cicerone podcast. I'd love to know what you think or if there's anything you'd like us to cover in future episodes. Please email live at cicerone.co.uk or leave a review on your podcast platform. You can follow or subscribe to the podcast to make sure you don't miss new episodes, or you can sign up to our newsletter for all our latest news, events and guidebooks. Visit cicerone.co.uk for further details. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, come and find us on our social channels. We're on all the main ones as at Cicerone Press, and we also have a Facebook group, Cicerone Connect, where you can meet and chat to other outdoor enthusiasts. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you soon.